name. Let us rejoice. Let us praise. Let us worship our God. Are there any announcements? Mary. Next week is Bucket Sunday. Get ready to bring your buckets and enjoy some treats after worship downstairs for coffee hour. Wonderful. Bucket Sunday. Any other announcements? Of course, I have to uh, go ahead. Go ahead, Diane. You want me to tell? Yeah, you can tell. Okay, so Tuesday, we are bagging for people that need food. On Tuesday, is that two? So we need people to help us, please, bag the stuff. Two o'clock, Tuesday, here. Yes. And it's very easy and it's kind of fun. Jeff could attest to that. <laughs> we just go around the room with our, our bags of groceries and we shop for people and then we load them in the truck. And Lisa delivers them. And I, my mother and I deliver them on Wednesday morning. Are there no other answers? No, one more. Just again, I'm doing music again, and it's very hard for me to gauge volume because I'm behind the speaker. So if as I'm playing, especially Andrea and Jeff who are right in front, <laughs> if, if, if while it's going on and the hymn's going on, if it's too loud, just give me a thumbs down and I'll turn it down, or a thumbs up and I'll turn it up. Because I don't really know the volume. So okay, you're for, our volume. For any, any of you, if you think it's one or the other. If I get a mixed bag, well, then I'm stuck. But. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. If there's no other announcements, let us open worship in prayer. Like an oasis in the desert, worship satisfies our weary and burdened souls. Today, help us find the good in this life by delighting in your presence, Lord. And help us find the hope you have placed in our innermost selves. Amen. <coughs> Thank you.
complaints. We come, come to you. Come to me if you are tired. We come to you. Come to me if you carry burdens. We come to you. Come and discover rest for your souls.
we face ourselves and God with the awareness of our shortcomings, we are given grace to grow and courage to continue the journey. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel in Jesus Christ we are forgiven.
before, we weigh ourselves down scrambling to remember all the laws. But Jesus set us straight. The law is simple, and all the other laws hang on it. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. If this law were kept by every soul on the planet, we would witness peace. Let us pray. Holy Father, creator of all things, we come before you with open hearts. Illuminate us in this moment and revive in us a love and a dedication to fulfilling your will through the reading of your word. Our first scripture reading comes from the Old Testament, Psalm 55, verses 1 through 11, and 22 through 23. It's 454 in your pew Bible. I give ear to my prayer. Give ear to my prayer, O Lord, O God. Do not hide from my supplication. Attend to me and answer me. I am troubled in my complaint. I am distraught by the noise of the enemy because of the clamor of the wicked, for they bring trouble upon me. And in anger they bear a grudge against me. My heart is in anguish within me. The terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fear and trembling come upon me, and the horror overwhelms me. And I say, Oh, that I had wings like a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. Truly, I would flee far away. I would lodge in the wilderness, sail up. I would hurry to find a shelter for myself from the raging wind and tempest. Confuse, O oh Lord, confound their speech, for I see violence and strife in the city. Day and night they go around it, on its walls, and iniquity and trouble are within it. Ruin in, is in its midst, oppression and fraud. Do not depart from this marketplace. Cast your burden on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. But you, O oh God, will cast them down into the lowest pit. The bloodthirsty and treacherous shall not live out half their days but I will trust in you. Our New Testament reading comes from the writer of Matthew. During Jesus' time, the religious elite were hard at work piling on all these laws that people were to abide by. We see it still occur in many of the conservative Jewish and Christian sects. The Jewish people were laboring to carry those burdens in hopes of being approved by God. Jesus saw the people carrying this burden, and he felt he needed to help them out. The previous verses in Matthew 11 come directly after, immediately after Jesus had sent his 12 hand-picked apostles out on separate missionary journeys. They were in pairs. They were out there to tell the good news. Jesus is continuing preaching in the various towns around Galilee. He was disappointed because he was performing miracles and healing and teaching the way of God, and the people were not serious about repenting. Instead of hearing Jesus and repenting, this generation decided that Jesus was a glutton and a drunk because he did not lead a restrictive lifestyle. Nonetheless, he had compassion for their weariness. Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Come to me, all who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and will give you rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Come to me, all you who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens and I will give you rest. If ever there was a line that we collectively and individually need right now, it is that. The last few years have been heavy. We've been bombarded by dark things almost daily. Division, separateness, hate, illness, greed. Sometimes it just weighs us down like a heavy boulder or a choking yoke. I'm glad that the picture of the yoke is on the screen. I know I have found myself angry and feeling helpless and burdened by the powers that be, making laws about my personal health as a woman and all the repercussions of that. 
I worry for people in public places being hurt or killed by someone mentally unstable, taking their rage out on them. I'm burdened by our leaders of this nation and those around the world. I feel the pain of the people in Ukraine and contempt for those who are making people suffer in their wars. Famine, human trafficking, domestic abuse, it goes on and on. It's so overwhelming the pain this collective planet is experiencing. Our world, our countries, and our communities are burdened by disease and violence, addiction and anxiety, self-centeredness and self-destructive behavior. We all feel that burden of uncertainty and insecurity that is gnawing at our soul. Are we good enough? Have we done enough? Some people are carrying yokes and burdens of poverty, some unemployment and rising health care. There are people in our country that are burdened by not knowing where they will find their next meal. There are people who are burdened by so much wealth that they measure worth only in the terms of dollars and not integrity or goodness. There are people who carry heavy burdens of a blemished past and burdens of bad decisions and who are unable to forgive themselves. There are people who are burdened with guilt and who are unable to find joy in life. There are people who are carrying heavy burdens because they worry about their children and their health, or the burden of seeing a parent that is suffering in body and mind. A unique burden of our time was, and still is, that we cannot visit some loved ones, the fear of dying alone and suffering. And our burdens start when we are young. So much pressure is placed on us to succeed. School pressure, athletic pressure. By the time we get to high school, we are full force into the burden of what our career path will be and of which college we are going to go to. And when have we checked off all the markers of activities that colleges are going to look at? We say, my life will be easy after I get through this and graduate. And then my life will be easy after I get this first job. And then my life will be easy when the house is paid off. And then my life will be easy when I retire, or when whatever. It just goes on and on. It really is amazing that any of us, has, is it really amazing that any of us have been stressed lately, anxious and fearful, and all of the above? We don't have a down pat of what we need to be doing in life, or the choices we've made right. And how about those who are watching us like a hawk, waiting for us to mess up? We have the weight of church life. We don't want to admit it, but there's much pressure in the mundane tasks of church, the burden of keeping the roof from leaking and the parking lot paid, the pressure to say the right words, to pray the right prayers, to tithe more than we can afford. And this is what Jesus is addressing to the people of this time. The heavy burden at that time most likely referred to the 613 prescriptions of Jewish law. The only way for salvation at that time was believed to be through the obedience of their law. And we know that they could never really keep all the laws, so they were always feeling guilty. They lived with a heavy burden knowing that they were never really good enough. He didn't want to see people weighed down with human constructions of laws and rules for doing this and doing that. He gave one law, and that was to love God with everything in you and to love everyone you met. All good would flow from those two actions. He wanted people to come to him when things got too much, and he would share their load. Jesus uses the analogy of an oxen yoked to each other. How many of you have seen a yoke up close? You see the yoke here. They see the yoke. It's this big wooden contraption. It has two circles for the oxen to stand next to each other, and it's attached over their heads. And the yoke ties the two oxen together. They are yoked. If one oxen is one ox is losing its strength, the other ox is there to share the load. By being yoked, when the oxen move, they walk in step together. One cannot change direction without the other. When one stops, the other is guided to stop. It is heavy and weighs on the oxen. 
Look, I mean, look at that face. I mean, oxen are big, but still. I can't imagine being on that. Okay. So, it's heavy. But Jesus' yoke is light. And when we are yoked to Jesus, we are given an easy way to follow. This is Jesus' call. Take his yoke upon us. He will direct us. He will share the load when we are burdened. How does he do that, you ask? We ask. By taking his yoke, we are in step with him. And he calls us to radically alter our lifestyle. We, we need to create a routine of worship and praise or focus on Jesus. It's not easy. We have so many responsibilities nowadays. But we need to say no to things that take us away from that focus. We conduct, need to conduct a re weekly rhythm of Sabbath rest. I know I should, uh, I should take my own preaching advice. <laughs> it doesn't have to be on a Sunday, but we need to find a day where our one purpose is to rest and the nourishment of spirit. Do what you love to do. Do what makes your spirit soar. It means watching all 12 Star Wars movies in a row. Have at it. It is meant to lighten your burden. We need to contemplate on how do we do community to those around us. We all are the body of Christ. Those who know it and those who don't. Are we nourishing that body? Are we lightening the burdens of those around us? These are not just words. This is a lifestyle. Lived day in and day out. It could sometimes feel like just another burden. But the Holy Spirit will bring you the strength and the resources to bear another's burden. Jesus says to learn from him as he is gentle and humble of heart. Jesus spoke of his true character as Lord and Savior. The word gentle is the same word as meek. It means a quiet spirit. It's patience in the face of difficulties, trials, and opposition. It is not the surrender of one's rights, and it's not cowardice. It does not mean weakness. It is a self-control over one's temperament and emotions. Jesus was the very model of gentleness. No man endured more suffering with patience than Jesus. He did not demand his rights when he was being wronged by others. Neither did he abuse the rights of others to the preservation of his own. Gentleness receives the injuries of others in the belief that God will vindicate his own. The passage in Romans 12, 19 states, Never take your own revenge, beloved, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Because of this attitude, the one gentle in heart seeks peace with others and offers peace with them. A humble person is a lowly person, a word seldom used nowadays. The humble soul does not seek nor notoriety or fame. The humble person is not arrogant or demanding. He prefers others over himself and seeks to lift others up rather than himself. This is something every Christian should strive for. Not to be gentle or humble, but to let the Holy Spirit live in and minister through us. Sometimes, in the midst of our burdens, it's hard to see the blessings. But they are there. They come in the most common moments of your day. When a task is too difficult, it finds its way to be easy. When you begin to lose hope in the goodness of people, someone gives you a needed compliment, or you see a story about how someone risked everything for another. When we are yoked to Jesus, we are partners. We are partners with him. It's up to us to call out for help and then take action and be open to that help from wherever it comes. We are the hands and feet of Christ to people 
But people are also the hands and feet of Christ to us. Be open to that. Be watchful of the mystery that God has in all of us. Lord, let us carry each other's burdens through Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Comforting God, you are ever ready to take us into your loving arms and give us rest. Lord, help us to quiet our minds and focus on you. Help us to accept help when we need it. For you are the balm to our weary souls, and we place all trust in you. Amen.
given. May they be given in our hearts and our minds for the continuation of spreading your word and your good news to all who are around us. My prayers of the people this morning involve several moments of silence. When I pause, I'd like you to please silently pray for those that I have lifted up. Let us pray. Lord God, we give thanks to you for the comfort of prayer. Lord, we lift up prayer to those all who are lost, heavy-hearted, and burdened. The world is a tiring place. We get lost in the chaos that is always around us. We can, it can weigh us down and we are weighed down by the enormity of the sadness in the world. But in you, there is always hope. Hope for a lighter journey, hope for a better tomorrow, for ourselves and for the world around us. Lord God, we lift up our prayers to those who are burdened by cancer, by Alzheimer's and depression. We lift up those fighting all kinds of physical ailments. Lord, we lift up our prayers for those who are afflicted with poverty, with war, with injustice and the pain of loss. Lord, we lift up our prayers to those who labor to bring the love of Jesus to this world. Lord, we lift up prayers for those who carry the burden of leadership in this church. And we lift up all leaders who across the world who strive to maintain peace in the midst of adversity. Lord, we lift up our prayers for the women, the men, and the children in our lives. Ease their burdens this day. Lord, we lift up our prayers for the deepest desires of our hearts. Grant us peace, Lord. Grant us hope. Grant us love. And grant us joy. Healing, Lord. We pray for those who need your healing touch. We lift them up to you now. Chip and Sue. Diane, Harry, Kristen. And Lord, you are the living, breathing God who holds our lives in your hands. All these things we pray, and we pray with the prayer your Son taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Amen. 